Welcome, everyone, to this NFL Draft Bible Spotlight Interview Edition. Ryan Roberts here, Rise and Draft on Twitter, bringing you anything and everything you need to know for the 2021 NFL Draft beyond any NFL Draft cycle. We have you covered. We have a young man here, LaMarcus Carradine, out of Belhaven University, a wide receiver, dynamic playmaker that is a player like a lot of people, right, this past offseason with everything COVID happening, pandemic shutdowns, a player that is waiting for his opportunity in a offseason that did not grant a ton of people opportunity. So he is working his tail off in order to get that opportunity coming to him very soon. He's working with us, a part of the free agency database headed by Marvin Jones, former fourth overall selection out of Florida State, new former New York Jet great. Um, really just LaMarcus is doing everything that he needs to do in his power for that opportunity whenever it does come. So LaMarcus, Inviting you in here, man. Bellhaven University in the building. How's everything going for you, my man? It's going pretty good. How about yourself? Uh, it's good, man. We're, uh, we're recording here on a Sunday morning, so we're about to get some NFL action for the first time here. And I know, uh, LaMarcus, obviously, you have in, in, um, deep aspirations of playing NFL, professional in general. Kind of starting out this interview just to put it out there for everybody. Um, I would assume that NFL would be the main goal, but are you open to potentially playing CFL, IFL, um, XFL when it comes back as well? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I am open to it. Um, as long as I get a chance to be on the field and, and be able to produce and have fun and enjoy, you know, and enjoy just being on the football field again, that would be, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, LaMarcus, I had the opportunity, obviously, to watch some of your film from this past year um, at Bell Haven. Uh, multiple 50-yard touchdowns, 17 yards a catch. Uh, just relive a little bit for me the career that you had at Bell Haven and just um, the experiences that you were able to grab there while, you know, obviously uh, being a student athlete as well. Well, basically, starting off going into my freshman year going to Bell Haven, um, I got there, uh, you know, First off, my intentions was to play when I as soon as first as I, like as soon as I got there, and that ended up not working out as planned. So my sophomore year, I came in, um, I did very well. I did very well at camp. Did very well, and so I was actually granted like the chance to start actually the third game of the season. I was still behind this other receiver. Um, he was you know very good receiver. I was behind him sophomore year. And then uh, some off the field issues got him, and so my first, my first ever start, I ended up um, having three touchdowns, a hundred and a hundred and seventeen yards, and so like after that, like I I never looked back, and so I I enjoyed every every opportunity that I got, like going to Bellhaven and coming out of high school, like that was really that was really my only university offer. And so when I got the chance to go to Bellhaven, I was, I was very, I was very joyful, and I was very appreciative of all the coaches and and everybody that had gave me a chance to show the things that I knew I could do. And so I just, I, every time I went on the field, I went out there and played with passion. Uh, I gave it all I had on and off the field because I knew, like at the end of the day, I I wanted to prove not other people right but myself right that I could do you know the things that I knew I could do absolutely and you, you mentioned a little bit obviously coming out of Eupora High School um, under coach Stephen Edwards obviously taking your game over to Bellhaven uh, Marcus if I had to ask you maybe were there any culture shocks or you mentioned a little bit obviously with you know not getting the playing time immediately that you were obviously were obviously working hard for what was kind of the biggest adjustment for you going from Eupora to Bellhaven when you first got there? Well, the biggest adjustment was uh, changing my position. And so at, at Eupora High School, I, uh, I actually played corner more than I played receiver. And so I'm, I'm thinking, as soon as I get to Bellhaven, I'm like, okay, I'm, I may end up playing corner. I may end up playing corner. And so as soon as I got there, first day, first day I got there, he was like, yeah, go to the receiver room. And I was just like, I was smiling, and I was thinking, like, okay, this this gonna be new, but I I can I can deal with this. I can deal with just playing receiver. And so, I like the culture. Once I got when I first got to Bell Haven was different than when I graduated, of course, because we had new we had new coaches. And so when we first got there, 
um, coach, uh, how Mummy was was my coach. And so it, we was in the air raid offense. So, of course, playing, coming and playing receiver was like, was like a big deal because you knew you was getting a bunch of passes per game. And so in high school, like when I got a chance to play receiver a little bit, we didn't pass the ball as much. So I was primarily, you know, either blocking or I knew I was getting the ball on that particular play. In the air raid offense, it's four receivers out there. Anybody can get the ball on any particular play. So you got to run your route to, you know, the best of your ability and always, always try to get open. And so being in that air raid offense was just – it was just so fun. It, it, was, it was magnificent. Like I was – yeah, I wasn't used to, you know, as many routes coming out. Like I had to learn literally every route that that I could learn and I ended up you know trying to become a student of the game because being out there you you have to not only know your responsibility but knowing other people's responsibility because it as a whole it makes the whole play just flourish basically like Absolutely. you go out there and you know the whole concept you, you run your route to your best ability you may you may know in the back of your head you're not getting the ball based on the coverage but in like in their mind, in the corner's mind, or the safety, whoever's looking at you, they they watch you. They doing like, and so with you running as full as full speed as possible, you may open up, you may open up a bigger play for the slot receiver, the other outside receiver on the other side because you running your route to the best of your ability. And so that was the biggest culture difference uh, coming from high school was basically, you know, changing my position and. Every every time I ran a route, it was just like I had to be a hundred percent, or I'm getting out the game. <laughs> I love it, and I, I know usually when I talk uh, Lamarcus to guys that maybe made the opposite transition, right? Like they went from wide receiver to corner. Like you see that sometimes, and they always tell me that you know that 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 experience they have in the wide receiver position, like they kind of understand like like cutting splits down and and how they're coming mm-hmm. out of breaks, different things like that. For you on the opposite spectrum. What did playing defensive back mostly, what, what did that bring to your wide receiver skill position and, and how were you able to kind of know how to take advantage of some coverage things? It basically made me, it basically made me a better player as, uh, as opposed to, you know, if I just play receiver coming straight out of high school, because I would know how, I would know how to uh, defense position and how, whether it was cover two, cover four, cover three, I could basically tell, uh, you know, we had this saying of, uh, you know, marry the – it says date the corner but marry the safety because the safety is, is basically to tell you what coverage they're in, more, more, you know, more likely. And so it made me so much uh, – it made me so much better because as soon as I lined up, if it was cover two, I knew it was either going to be a whole shot – most likely it was going to be a whole shot if we was running the go route. Like, because it was just – that's just how the coverage breaks down. Mm-hmm. And so it made me be more aware – it made me be, you know, just an all-around better athlete um, in general because I, I, I love football. So all I do, like, I love studying different, different things that I could do. And so mm-hmm. when I, like, when I played corner, I love to see how receivers lined up to see how they was gonna run the route. And so it was the same. It was the same thing for me when I moved to receiver. I wanted to, I looked at a corner and was just like, okay, I could tell if he a little bit nervous. Or if he's in the back cuddle first, all, like you could just you could just get the feel for it, mm-hmm. and so that's what that's what that's what helped me out a good uh, a good little bit, being honest. Yeah, and I know I, I've obviously been able to see your game a little bit now, but for people that haven't seen you, uh, are you a slot only? Do you play all over the place? Like what? Well, how would you describe yourself as a football player? I'm honestly very versatile. I can play I can play the slot position uh, or the outside position. I can I can either I, I can even play kick return and punt return. Um, I didn't do it much at Bellhaven. I I played kick return probably two or three times at Bellhaven, but I could do it. And so once I got a chance to do it, I did very well at it. And so we had other players that was back there like that could do just as well, but they didn't they didn't get on like they didn't play they didn't play like receiver and stuff like that. They just particularly wanted to just do kick like particularly was just on kick return. And so it was more so giving me more of a break to be able to go out there and run routes to my full potential than just, you know, being on every special teams, which I I absolutely love <laughs> special teams. I love special – I just love being on the field in general because when I'm on the field, I feel like I can do something positive, and it's just 
it's just something about being out there, no matter what what team you on, offense, defense, special teams. I I enjoy it all. Absolutely, and I I know you already mentioned yourself being kind of a student of the game. You can really tell it, you know, just by your film watching you as a route runner. I feel like you have a, a lot of craftiness to you. If I had to ask you who are some players, because when I think of route runners in the NFL right now, I think of guys like Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper, Keenan mm-hmm. Allen, like those types of players. Who are some guys that maybe you model your game after a little bit? I honestly model my game after Stephon Diggs and Odell Beckham. I love, I, I love crafty receivers that that can that can run great routes, have great run out the catch ability, and just is is not and is very fearless when they're running routes. I, I love I love every bit of it. It's just and they they're not afraid to they're not afraid to catch the ball in traffic. It it just seems like they're not afraid to get hit. They they really they want to make a play at all times. And I absolutely love that. No matter if it's no matter if it, you know more more so Stefan Diggs. No matter if it's blocking anything like that. And so I just I enjoy watching those type of guys play because I'm out of my game after them now. So. Mm-hmm. And I know I wanted to highlight uh, the combine work that you did this this past off season, right? These these phenomenal numbers. You were at HBCU. You were up at the national combine over there in Indianapolis. Uh, some really nice numbers um, overall. The Marcus, how 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 happy were you with these numbers? I mean, I need to highlight this forty one inch vertical, which is absolutely a ridiculous number. How do you feel like you were able to to tackle that part of the the evaluation process and then test this at this level of an athlete? Well, when when I first got there, I already knew, like, when I was testing, testing back at Bellhaven, and I was just like, okay, one thing I'm going to emphasize is my jump in the middle. I said, because I, I also ran track at Bellhaven, a uh, long jump, uh, ran 100 meters, and this because that's that's who I am. That's my ability. And so one thing that was in my head was I'm trying to get over. I didn't reach my goal. I was trying to get a 43. I said I'm trying to get a 43. Like I'm really pushing for it. And so I got out there and my first jump. I, I was thinking in the back of my head. I was like, okay, I need to get this first jump because after this first jump, then I could just push it, push it even more. So on my first jump, end up jumping to 39. And so I was like, okay, okay. I feel like I kind of barely jumped. So I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna get it now. I'm finna get it. So I'm kind of hyping myself up in my head. And so I get out there and it's the second go around. I jumped. End up end up hitting the 41. I was I was Dang it. Everybody was looking at me like, bro, you jumped the 41. I was trying to hit a 43. And so and at the end of the day, like I was, yeah, I jumped the 41, but I could have got higher. Like I always, I'm that type of person where if no matter how good I do something, I always feel like I can better myself in that, in, in anything that I do. And like my dad always told me, if you're going to be a dish digger, be the big, like, be the best dish digger you can be. Like, don't ever settle for nothing less. So that's how I always model, you know, different things that I do, no matter if it's the vertical, uh, you know, the shuttle, the forward, anything like that. So I'm always trying to better myself in anything. Out running, releases, I'm, I, I'm always doing it, like, all the time. And so to the combine test and the other numbers other than the vertical, you know, I did I did fairly well in it, but I didn't do as good as what I wanted to do. And I didn't do as good as what I did vertical. That was that was a very big part of uh, you know, of what I wanted to do. And I, I love I love the um the explanation. I, so Lamarcus, I actually was a I, I've been a track coach for a long time too. So I understand, you know, when the throwers jumpers, right? Like they just want to get that first mark. And then they open mm-hmm. it up, like you said, on the second one. So that's that's a great point. And I, I could tell that you were a track guy just by that little explanation. You know, you just want to get that first mark, the second jump, the second throw, whatever it is, that's always the big one. So I love that, man. And I obviously, you've been working this off season, doing everything that's in your control. Obviously, you know, I it, not to be a downer, but, you know, for, for a lot of people, it's been a 
tough off season to say the least with everything going on for you. How do you feel like you've been able to navigate it? How have you been able to stay ready? What have you been able to do that's going to kind of show when you get that opportunity that you've been working, even when it's been a very tough situation to maybe get as much work as you possibly want to get in? Well, first off, it comes from being honest. It comes from how I grew up. I've always grew up in certain environments that was not comfortable. And no matter what, no matter what happens or anything else, I can't let any outside forces dictate what I do with my life. And so I will always content, continue to work hard no matter what I do. I will always continue, continue to, like, to better myself in, in, in every aspect of, you know, outside of football, inside of football. I'm always trying to be the best at all times. And I've always, like, I've always loved to work out. I've always loved to stay in shape no matter if it, you know, football presents this stuff or anything like that. I will... I will continue to work as hard as I can. And I stay in the gym all the time. I stay going, I stay going to the field running routes. Uh, it's just, it's, it's something I enjoy more, like just about more than anything. I really love football. And so once I get out there, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go all the time. Like I'm always ready to run routes. Like I say, I'm always ready to go to the gym. So no matter what, what is happening and you know, this all season, I will continue to work as hard as I can. And I, and I just, <laughs> I love pushing myself. I love pushing myself to different limits because I feel like, I feel like if, if my, I feel like honestly, if people are not laughing at your dreams, then it's not big enough, you know, in that aspect. So I'm always pushing, I'm always pushing to better myself. And I, I love it. I just love, I love seeing the outcomes, you know, when you work hard, things come. So I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I, I feel like if anything, this offseason has really tested that love for a lot of guys and the, the people that are coming out on the other side are the ones that have shown that they love this. They're going, you know, it's, it's always about what you're doing. People aren't looking right. Like that's always kind of the thing that I, that I go back to a little bit. And I know you being a talented player, you're waiting on that opportunity. We talked a little bit about to begin with that, you know, whether it's a CFL or XFL or whatever league it is, obviously NFL being the number one. You're, you're going to take every advantage of opportunity. You talked a little bit about the special teams, right? Like you're willing to do everything that it matter that you have to, to make that opportunity. So let's talk about when that opportunity finally does come for you. Uh, you get that call, you sign that contract. You're finally a, a professional football player. What do you, what do you think that that moment's going to feel like for you? And what type of blessing overall would it be? I'm going to be honest. I don't, <laughs> I, I really, really don't know what it'll actually feel like for it to happen. Like it, I know it's going to like legit blow my mind. I'm going to feel, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to feel so, so like, so good. Like, yeah. and so if I, you know, if I get a chance uh, to sign a contract and, and when I, like, if I do get a chance, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to push everything I got everything I got into making sure that whoever chooses me made the, made the right decision and made the, and I just I dream of that day <laughs> I dream of that day it's, it's just it, it's something for me to continue to work towards because I know I can do it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and kind of the last question Marcus I wanted to end you off here was for any now evaluator watching coach GM whoever it might be the minute that LaMarcus Carradine enters their building, what are they getting in you as, as a football player? And maybe more importantly, what are they getting in you as a person to add to their organization? Well, first off, I'll start off as a person. As a person, they're going to get somebody that's, that's always willing to work, always willing to, always willing to help out the guy next to them. Because I'm, I, me as a person, I love seeing other people succeed. Not just myself. I absolutely love seeing others, you know, achieve their goal. And that that more than anything uh, makes me so happy is it's, it's seeing somebody that's worked so hard to get something like that they've always dreamed of and it comes true for them. And so they get, like I said, they're getting a very selfless guy. They're getting somebody that's going to go out there and based on the football level, they're getting somebody that's going to go out there and produce, give it all they got. Uh, I'll play any special teams, any, any, anything like I would give it all I got because at the end of the day, I've I've worked so hard for uh you know opportunities like this, and I'm and I will not let you know any outside forces dictate how I do 
you know, how I do things. And so I just, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. it yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So again, Mr. LaMarcus Carradine, wide receiver, special teams player, whatever he needs to do out of Bellhaven University, he is ready to do for your organization. Uh, again, Ryan Roberts here, Rise and Draft on Twitter, bringing you this NFL Draft Bible spotlight interview for our frequency database headed by Mr. Marvin Jones, former New York Jets linebacker. Uh, LaMarcus, man, it was fun. It was honestly a joy just to hear uh, the, 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 just the emotion in your voice talking about the game a little bit, man, digging into your background. I appreciate you so much for taking some time today, and you can be sure that I'm wishing you the absolute best of luck here moving forward. Yes, sir. Thank you.